reading Isaiah chapter 26. God wants us to trust him, y'all. No matter what is breaking loose, no matter what these last days have to offer, no matter what the demonic stirs up and conjures up, no matter what the government does, backwards or forwards, bottom line, trust God, not man. Starting at verse 1, In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Isn't that something? Listen to that. He didn't say brick and mortar. He said salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. In other words, our protection is in salvation. Number two, open ye the gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength for he bringeth down them that dwell on high the lofty city, he layeth it low. He layeth it low even to the ground. He bringeth it even to the dust. Now check this out. Check this out. This is what's happening right now. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Now isn't that something how we are confined to our home? confined to isolation and it feels like it's being put upon us by the government and the powers that be with all of their little secret agendas and little conspiracies but in actuality this is a time to be obedient because within our obedience in our salvation and in doing what God says we will remain safe, as it were. So when he says, come my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. What we're dealing with now is an indignation, y'all. This is uncomfortable. It can be lonely. It can be boring. It can render many restless, irritable, it can really force you to face your relationships with those you live with in your household. It can force you to face yourself. And it can force many of you to turn to God in ways you never turned to him before. Whatever occurs during that shutdown time, lockdown time, the bottom line is there's a protection in it. You can't be ripping and running and romping all over town, out and about, doing this, that, and the other, all day, every day. Going to the movies one day, going out to eat the next, hanging out, playing chess with your buddies next week, having people over for dinner, going to different churches, sitting up in congregations, holding hands, singing kumbaya, reading scriptures, praying together. It's wonderful to do, but there is a time, as Ecclesiastes says, there's a time to embrace and there's a time to refrain from embracing. And whatever time it is, y'all, you got to trust God through the whole thing. You must trust God because whatever he says to do is going to be for your good and mine. He's going to bless and protect you and me through it all. I was really surprised when I saw that scripture where he instructed his people. 
to enter into their chambers, where he instructed them to shut their doors, where he instructed them to hide themselves. Until this indignation be overpassed, we know Corona is going to come to pass one day. But we have got to ask God for patience while we wait for this whole weird period to blow over. And God will let us know just like he let the Israelites know when it's time to move. When it's time to bust the move and come on out of hiding. We're not hiding out of fear, y'all. We're not hiding out of intimidation. We're not hiding because we're hypochondriacs. We're hiding in God's protection. We're letting God cover us and protect us while others are getting sick. We're allowing God to protect us and cover us while others are being judged. We're allowing God by staying and hiding to provide and bless us, heal us, keep us as the apple of his eye. There's a lot of ways to trust. And a lot of times we think we're trusting God and we're trying to manipulate him because we are master manipulators, some of us. But God has got a reason for allowing some of these seasons, y'all. We always hear it for Christmas. There's a reason for the season. But guess what? We don't always know what the reason for the season is when it's not Christmas. We don't know what the reason is. God in all his wisdom and all his knowledge, he knows what he's doing. No matter how the elections turn out, he knows what he's doing. And he knows those that belong to him. We have a mark on us, y'all. There is a an umbilical connection between us and God. He knows his babies. And if we stay under his covering and do what he says and live as holy as we can and try to please him and serve him, we're not winning brownie points because I'm going to tell you, we please him by being saved. We please him by attempting to live a holy life. We please him by choosing his way by living in his word. We please him. We're already approved of him and accepted by him. But the way to stay out of danger's way is to persist in it. Persist in every little waking moment where you can let your little behind show. You know how they used to do back in the day when People would run through the streets naked. They called it streaking. Or somebody would bend over and drop his pants and show his behind to the, to the people on the street. They call it mooning. Yeah. Well, you don't have to moon your way through life. God's got the sun shining bright enough where you don't need to resort to those low tactics. And see, this is something... And many of us do as Christians. When things start getting rough and tough, people start getting on our last nerve, we're ready to moon somebody, ain't we? We're ready to cuss them out, show people just how ugly our behind can get. And God say, keep your pants up and trust me. Shut your mouth, trust me. Keep that attitude in check, trust me. You don't have to prove yourself to anybody. If somebody accuses you of doing something you didn't do, tell them, whatever. God will show you who's right and who's wrong. I ain't got to stand here and defend myself. You don't have to worry about what people think about you and what they feel about you and what they're saying about you behind your back. It doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about who's going to be president and who's not going to be president. It doesn't matter. You know why? If God can take a donkey and give a word of correction to the prophet that's sitting on it, he can definitely, or to the man that's sitting on it, he can definitely change the heart of a president 
that's running for parties that go dead, totally against God's ways and turn his heart toward God and God is able through his power to convince the man, scare the man, give the man the ability and a backbone to do what he says and he can sign executive orders to reverse a lot of this crap that his own party. So don't worry about who's in. God's the one who's in control. Trust God, no matter what's going on, y'all. All these prophecies of devastations, disasters, food shortages, all of this going on. Trust God. Go to God and ask him what is coming. Go to God and ask him all the things that you wonder about. He knows he is capable of answering you for himself. Yes, he is. If you're patient enough to sit and wait for his answer. See, when we trust God, we need patience. We need faith. <laughs> yeah. And when we trust God, we need to have self-control, which means we can't just jump up like a little jackrabbit and say, eh, took too long, uh, time out, I'll handle it. No. So whatever you do, just a quick word. Trust God, you guys. Trust him when you don't know what the heck he's doing. Trust him when you don't know why. Trust him when you don't know how he's going to get it done. Trust him. I'm going to tell you right now. I know God's going to make a way for me to get that tree out of my yard. I know it. I don't know how, but I know it. Because every other thing, every single thing, he has come through in the craziest ways. Remember I told you when I first, um, when I first wanted the Lord to help me trim the tree? You remember that? I mean, when I ask the guys how much they charge just to trim the tree, they're talking five, six hundred dollars. I talked them down to four. Not that I got it, but I talked them down. Then I asked how much to cut it all the way down. They're talking fifteen to two. I talked them down to thirteen hundred. I'm a haggler. What can I say? I'm from New York. But listen, I don't have to have the money, y'all. I don't have to have the money. God can make an organization have somebody right at that moment that's willing, that he moves on their heart and makes them willing as a community service to come over here and cut down my tree beautifully, safely, and neatly and remove it. I've seen God do crazy things like that. See, a lot of you, when you trust God, you think you have to have the money. You think God's got to give you money all the time. There are times all God has to do is, is give you a person. And that person can do something for you for pennies on the dollar. You might have $75 sitting in the kitchen. And you're looking for, you're asking God for $2,000 to do a job that somebody might only charge you $75 for. When they trimmed my tree, that was a five, $600 job. What did these guys charge me? That was seven years ago, $100. I already had the hundred sitting in my house. See, you guys have to understand when you trust God, you don't need money. You don't need connections. My connection was God getting into this house. Didn't even know it had dropped that low. You don't need connections. You don't need the know-how. God will put in your mind a picture of how to go about doing something that you never thought of before. And the whole thing makes sense. And you never forget it. And you're able to do it from beginning to end perfectly. Why? God put it in there because you asked him. See, everything ain't about the dollar bill, connections, knowledge, uh, skill. 
No, I was doing a lady's uh, hair one time. She had alopecia areata, bald spots all over her scalp. And she wanted a full head weave. And the kind of weaves I did, I did them from hair pieces. And I knew how to track it and cut it and slice and dice to make it go on so it looked like the person's own hair. But my problem with this woman was I couldn't figure out how the heck I was going to get this on her head. There was no area where I could braid a braid all the way from side to side without an interruption of a big ball spot. And I'm looking it up toward God, like thinking in my mind, Lord, you got to show me something or else I'm about to tell this lady to go home. Bam! Just like that. I saw the whole image in my mind, y'all. You wonder how some people come up with inventions that change, that, 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 that changes the life of so many people. It comes from God. I sat there and saw the whole road map, the whole layout, and I, he puts it in there so you don't even forget it while you're working on it. I laid that road map, braided that lady's hair according to what God showed me, totally different than my normal procedure, sewed those pieces on, cut, sliced, diced, thin, got done, folks at church Never knew she went through an alopecia stage for two years. I just kept redoing it every six months. I mean, every six weeks. They never knew a thing. And when it was all said and done, and her hair grew back because we kept praying about it, she never missed a beat. They just thought she went and got a cute little haircut. But they never knew that she went through that stage. So, like I said, you don't have to know it all. You don't have to know that special somebody. You don't have to have money in your pocket. You don't have to know how to, how to get about getting something done. You don't have to have connections. All you need in any phase of your life is J-E-S-U-S, -S, Jesus. That's all you need. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And you're good to go. In any direction you want to, you're good to go. Amen? If God tells you to travel in ministry and go here, or go there, and you don't have the wherewithal, the wherewithal will be there for you. Because God makes a way where there is no way. So trust him through these awkward times, y'all. Trust him. During this time, if you spend a little more time with him and ask him a few more questions, you might start getting some million-dollar answers. You might start getting some real solutions to some major problems in people's lives. And you can impact their lives with the answers God gives you that you never could have thought of if they offered you a million bucks to come up with a solution. But you know it came from God. Amen? Trust God, y'all. You never know where that trust will take you. Don't limit yourself. Don't put a cap on it. Say, Lord, wherever you want to take me, whatever you want me to do, However you want to get it done, I'm willing to follow you there. Amen? God bless you. And be encouraged. God's got you. He's hiding you. He's protecting you. He will lead and guide you. Amen.